John Kasich from Wednesday. We leave this recorded event now to take you live to the Iowa State Fair where Democratic Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the chair of the Democratic National Committee, is on the Des Moines Register soapbox. I'll mention to be up here on the stage at the, at the Des Moines Register soapbox and this is such an important opportunity to really talk about the choices that we have in front of us over the next 15, 16 months. And what I do every year is this this fair is one of the best fairs in America, and I know Iowans clearly believe it's the best fair. Every single time I've come, I've brought one of my kids. I have my third, third child with me. It was her turn this year, and we spent the afternoon at the fair yesterday, and it was an absolutely incredible time. I can't begin to describe to you the amount of fried food that we ate on a stick, which is something we look forward to every year. I can tell you that my son, in, in advising my daughter w that she should definitely come with me this year, said, Rebecca, you should go because, not going to lie, it was my best food day ever. <laughs> in his 15 years at the time, that was saying a lot. So. Again, I'm so glad to be here because uh, there's a little bit going on in uh, the political world today, and you've had an opportunity to hear from a number of candidates. I have the privilege of talking with you about the very clear contrast and the two choices that we have to, to be able to make in America over the next year or so during the course of this presidential campaign. We are at a crossroads in America. We have had Republicans who you've heard from, who have time and time again said, you know what, the best thing to do is not to go forwards, but to go backwards. Let's go back to the failed trickle-down economic policies of the past, those policies that say we should focus on cutting taxes for the wealthiest, most fortunate Americans. Instead of Democrats who believe that we should focus on helping people reach the middle class. As a mom with three young kids, as a member of Congress, the lens through which I look is what are our policy choices going to mean for their adult life? What, what kind of America are they going to grow up in? I want them to grow up in an America that gives them a fair shot to get ahead that makes sure that everybody has an opportunity to succeed, not just the people who are already successful. And that's what Republicans have been focused on. You, you can see consistently that whether it's Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, John Kasich, uh, there's so many of them, it's hard to remember them all, Donald Trump, they think that it's a really good idea to protect people at the top. And, and if you take a deeper dive into the policy positions that they've taken, they are really not only not supportive of helping move America forward, but they, they really want to take us backwards. They, they almost seem like they are focused on making sure that people have a harder time getting ahead. And I'll give you a, several examples. Let's talk equal pay. Let's talk about it. Democrats believe in equal pay for equal work. It is unacceptable in America today that women still only earn 78 cents for every dollar a man earns. Does anyone think that here in this crowd that that's okay, that we should just leave that status quo in place? Or should women earn equal pay for equal work? I have two daughters. I want to make sure that when they're adults, they get paid the same for doing the same work as a man does in the same job. Yeah. It is yeah. unacceptable in America today that African American women and Latina women earn even less. African American women today earn 64 cents for every dollar that a man does doing the same job. And Latina women earn 56 cents in the same situation. That's an unacceptable policy. And what do Republicans, how do Republicans respond? They respond like Scott Walker did. As governor of Wisconsin, Scott Walker actually signed legislation to repeal equal pay enforcement in Wisconsin. Rick Perry vetoed equal pay legislation, as did Chris Christie. Marco Rubio suggested that making sure that we can enforce federal law, the Equal Pay Act, was wasting time. Well, 
I'll tell you as a woman and as a mother of two daughters and as a representative of thousands of constituents of my own in South Florida, I believe that we need to make sure that we fight not only to support equal pay but to enforce it. And that is what every one of our presidential candidates believes. Let's talk about health care. You see, the important thing for us to focus on over the course of the next year and a half is what is the contrast? What are the choices that we have? Which candidate for President of the United States is going to be supportive of the cornerstones of a middle class life? What are those? That includes making sure that you have a good roof over your head. It makes sure that you have access, you maintain access to quality, affordable health care. It, it means making sure that you get a good education, that you have a secure retirement. Those are all cornerstones of a middle class life. And let's look at the Republican record. The Republican record on all of those things, as soon as the Republicans took the majority after the 2010 election, they passed legislation in the first 100 days that, repeal, that attempted to repeal all of President Obama's efforts to ensure that people could remain in their homes. When President Obama took office, we were losing 750,000 jobs a month. And now you fast forward to today and we've had 65 straight months of job growth in the private sector. More than five full years of job growth. The last several months have seen more than 200,000 jobs created. And that's the kind of progress that we want to continue to see. But not under a Republican presidency. We wouldn't see that under a Republican presidency because they don't support making sure that people can keep a roof over their head. Every candidate for president on the Republican side has as a top priority to repeal the Affordable Care Act. What does that mean? That means that the 16 million Americans who have gained access to health care coverage would lose it. It means that young adults who can stay on their parents' insurance now until they're 26 years old would no longer be able to. What it means is that the 129 million Americans like I am, who live in this country with a pre-existing condition, I'm a breast cancer survivor. I was diagnosed with breast cancer at 41 years old, seven and a half years ago. And you know, besides that horrible feeling of not knowing whether you're going to be able to see your children grow up, the second fear you have as a breast cancer patient is when is the other shoe going to drop? This was before the Affordable Care Act. When is the other shoe going to drop? Is an insurance company going to drop my coverage or deny me coverage because I have a pre-existing condition? No one should face medical bankruptcy. No one should have to fight not only for their life, but also for their health care coverage. That's unacceptable, and every single candidate for president on the Republican side would take, about, take us back to that dark place. We're not going back, are we? We're not going back. We're going to continue to move forward. You know, the Republicans the last few weeks have not had such a fun time, have they? If you, uh, it's been really interesting among the 18 Republican candidates for president. Uh, if, if, if Republicans think that things have gone well, they need only to take a look at Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush actually said a few days ago that we are spending too much on women's health care. How many women in this crowd think that we're already spending too much and that we should spend less making sure that women can stay healthy? Is there any hands in the air that we're spending too much? Well, I know that the women that I know, not only in my district but all across America, want to make sure that they can stay healthy because it's not just a women's issue to make sure that women can remain healthy. It's a family issue and an economic issue. The reason that it's an economic issue is that 40% of women, 40% of households with children are headed by a woman and a woman who's working. If women are not able to remain healthy, if they're not able to get that basic access to health care, if they're not able to make their own reproductive choices and plan their families, then that affects their ability to support their families in a very significant way. So let's take a look at where the Republicans are on women's access to health care. Jeb Bush 
Jeb Bush supports repealing the Affordable Care Act. He supports making sure that women can't get access to health care that allows them to make their own reproductive choices. Marco Rubio has the same opinion as Todd Aiken. He supports a ban on abortion in all cases, even in the case of rape or incest. Rape or incest. That is not where America is. Where America is, is that women should have access to health care. I want to close. I want to close on retirement security because there is a very clear contrast between where Republicans and Democrats are on a secure retirement. We just celebrated. We just celebrated 50 years. 50 years of Medicare and 50 years of Medicaid and 80 years of Social Security. Those programs ensure that if you work hard throughout your life, if you play by the rules, when you retire, you're not going to have to worry about falling through the floor. You're going to have a floor that's going to support you, that's going to ensure that you can feed your family, that's going to ensure that you can keep that roof over your head, that you're not going to have to choose between medicine and meals. Democrats passed Social Security and Medicare, support strengthening Social Security and Medicare, and have strengthened them. And Republicans, Republicans like Jeb Bush, they believe that we should privatize Social Security. Jeb Bush supported his brother's plan to privatize Social Security. You remember how well that debate went. That went down in a ball of flames because Americans support Social Security. Americans support Medicare. But, but Jeb Bush said the other day that we should phase out Medicare. Does anyone here think that Medicare should be phased out, that senior citizens shouldn't be entitled to making sure that they have a strong health care and that they don't have to worry about it? We need to make sure that we have a candidate for president who focuses on making sure that we have all of the corner cornerstones in place of a middle class life. It is our Democratic candidates for president that will ensure that. And finally, finally, I know I said finally once already, but really finally, let's take a look at the, uh, at the first Republican debate. At the first Republican debate, which was held on the 50th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act, I thought it was appalling. Well, there were a lot of things appalling, including the misogynistic comments of Donald Trump and the fact that none of the Republican candidates on that stage called him out on any of those misogynistic comments. But could you, I couldn't believe that not a single candidate on the 50th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act actually suggested that we may want to expand access to voting rights. There was no mention on that stage of support for increasing people's access to the polls. Why? Because once Republicans began taking over the state legislatures and governor's mansions, what did they do? They started restricting access to the polls, passing voter suppression laws all across this country and denying people their right to vote. We have to make sure that elections are able to be conducted so that voters have a chance to maximize their access to the polls. And that's what Dem Democrats stand for. We will continue to fight for every vote. And lastly, lastly, let's, I, wanna, I really want to close on a high note. I am so proud of the Democratic Party and our support for making sure that we are more equal in America. Today, with Barack Obama as president, with the support of Democrats, we live in a more equal America. No, we don't. The Supreme Court has finally made sure that love is love is the law of the land. Marriage equality is something that everyone in America can enjoy no matter where they live. And let me just say, we're going to continue to push for the kind of equality that every American deserves. I'm so proud of the Black Lives Matter movement because the changes in policy that we need to ensure that no matter what your skin color, what your, your skin color is, what your background is, that everyone has the ability to be treated fairly and equally and not live in fear. Policy needs to change. I'm proud of the young people who have been pushing that Black Lives Matter movement. We brought the Confederate flag down. We've made sure that symbols of hate, symbols of hate are unacceptable in America. But now we need to move forward even more.
What we don't need is immigration policy like that that has been spewed by the hateful comments of Republican candidates for, pre for president. Donald Trump, it's appalling and unacceptable that he would refer to Mexicans as rapists and killers instead of people who just want to come here to make a better way of life for themselves and their families. And then I can't even use the vulgar term that he has used and that Jeb Bush has doubled down on and many of the Republican candidates have, have called children of immigrants who are not the vulgar word that they've used, but are citizens, citizens. This week there has been a debate on the Republican side over whether to deny or take away citizenship from babies born in this country under the 14th Amendment who all have legal constitutional citizenship. That is what the Democratic Party stands for. Equality, equality of opportunity, making sure that we can support the cornerstones of a middle class life. That's what you'll get from a Democratic president. And I will work every single day along with so many of you to make sure that the Democratic nominee for president is elected, the 45th president of the United States. And we will do it on the shoulders of Iowa voters like we have for many, many election cycles. On to victory. Thank you so much. Democratic Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz of Florida, who is also the chair of the Democratic National Committee, speaking today at the Iowa State Fair on the Des Moines Register soapbox. A number of presidential candidates throughout the past week have been on the soapbox. Uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, of course, not a candidate for president, but uh, selling uh, the Democratic side uh, of things as we move into the campaign season. We do have uh, a couple of re more Republican candidates who will take to the soapbox today. We plan to bring them to you live as well. Chris Christie coming up at noon today and uh, Bobby Jindal of uh, Louisiana, the Republican governors of New Jersey and Louisiana coming up as our Road to the White House coverage continues here on C-SPAN. Now we'd like to uh, get your thoughts on what you heard from Debbie Wasserman Schultz, or if you have uh, thoughts on uh, the candidates you've, you've seen so far this week at the Iowa State Fair, who impressed you the most? The uh, numbers are on your screen, Republicans 202-748-8921. If you're a Democrat, that number is 202-748-8920. Independents and uh, all others, 202-748-8922. Uh, and we've set up a line just for Iowa voters today. That's 202-748-8923. Of course, you can tweet us at C-SPAN or leave a post uh, on our Facebook page. Let's go right to the calls. Kimberly joins us from Washington State on the line for Democrats. Your thoughts, Kimberly? Hey, I was just calling because, you know, while I love that she is talking about wanting to hear from, you know, all everybody on all sides, the call for only six debates um, this election season is a little ridiculous. I mean, as a Democratic voter, I would love to be able to hear from all of the candidates equally. And I feel like the way that it's set up is set up in favor of, you know, Hillary Clinton. And that's really unfair to the Democratic process. So for somebody that's the head of the Democratic Party to not, you know, call attention to this and continue to support it is just incredibly disappointing for the whole Democratic system. I would love to see us have more debates this election year um, than the six that are proposed. Kimberly, is there a Democratic candidate other than Hillary Clinton that has impressed you either in Iowa or at another uh, event so far? Well, I mean, Bernie Sanders is just, you know, all around great. I really love that he truly speaks, you know, to the people. But even Martin O'Malley has some great things to say. But it seems like, you know, with all of the, you know, media being needing to push towards particular candidates, it'd be great to be able to hear sides from everybody, you know. I haven't heard very much about Lincoln Chaffee either, and I'd love to hear his opinions on things. And, you know, six debates in the grand scheme of things, to hear all of these candidates say what they think and to be able to contrast them, that's a really important part of the democratic process. And like I said, it's just really disappointing not to hear her um, call for more debates than the six that have already been proposed. All right, thanks for the call. Peter joins us from Lakeland, Florida, also a democratic caller. Your thoughts? Hey, hey, good morning. Good morning. That last caller hit it. That last caller hit a lot of the frustration in Democrats. That six debates, you know, Debbie Wasserman Schultz is the chair, chairwoman of the DNC. 
In 2014, we got wiped out because all she backed was corporate-owned Democrats. She'd rather have a corporate-owned Democrat win than a progressive. And that's what she's done to Florida. And how she still got that chairmanship is unbelievable, except for the DNC, the oligarchs in Wall Street that give money to the DNC are the reason why Debbie's got the six votes. They're scared to death of Bernie Sanders. Thanks for calling George in New York, in Ossining, New York, independent yes. caller. Go ahead. Yes, good morning. Uh, the candidate that most impressed me was Donald Trump, specifically the, the primary purpose of the federal government is to secure the border. So at a minimum, we need a secure border. And secondly, at a minimum, we need to solve the situation with illegals that are felony, convicted of felonies and need to be either incarcerated or removed back to the country of origin. And that's the primary concern I feel for my neighbors. And um, I think he's the only candidate that's brought this up as an issue. Republican caller from Brighton, Massachusetts. John joins us now. Yes, hello. Thank you. Take my call. Sure. Uh, I'll tell you, Ms. Wasserman Schultz has a very tough deal going as far as the candidate she has to back. One is an avowed socialist and the other is uh, someone who is under considerable uh, political fire right now. Um, she stays on message. Uh, I'll give her credit for that. But uh, I just think the message is old and tired. And it's all, it seems to be all about abortion at this point. Uh, she's trying to stir up the female um, electorate to vote for Hillary. But it, I just I can't see it working this time. Uh, enjoy the show. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for calling. Chris Christie is up next on the uh, soapbox at the uh, Iowa State Fair. And this tweet from uh, Chris Christie earlier, taking the family to the Iowa State Fair tomorrow. That tweet, of course, from yesterday. Christie kids taking over Snapchat and Mary Pat taking over Instagram. Chris Christie, the governor of New Jersey, Republican presidential candidate coming up at uh, noon Eastern on the uh, Iowa State Fair uh, Des Moines Register soapbox. And this story from uh, USA Today, Chris Christie looks for an Iowa boost. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie joked in a Fox News interview that he might ride a pony when he arrives at the Iowa State Fair on Saturday so he could outdo Donald Trump, who touched down at the fair last week in a helicopter. But Christie has bigger concerns than trying to match Trump's outlandishness. He's slipping in the polls, putting him at risk of being knocked off the main stage when CNN televises the next primetime Republican presidential debate. Back to a few more calls. Charles in Richmond, California, on the line for Democrats. Hi. Hello. Charles, I think you need to turn down your uh, television there so we don't get that echo. Okay. You with us? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I want to talk about the Republicans. Go ahead, Charles. You may, wonder, you, you may wonder what I'm talking about, but the South has taken over the Republican Party and they have a clan mentality, in my opinion. And I think they want to take the America back down again. They want to take the country back. In their mind, they want to take from us everything that has been achieved. And I think it's crazy. The Republicans never have anything to say positive about America. They never going into the future in America. They only want to talk about taking things back, going backwards, taking away programs and tax breaks to the rich. While well, tax breaks to the rich, I believe, cause us America to be in the problem in the situation it is in today. And the Democrats, as far as the Democrats are concerned, I think they have a positive program. I think their program is far reaching into a futuristic way. Uh, uh, Bernie Sanders, he's speaking to the people. I believe his program is going to catch fire in the near future. Thank you, Charles. Thomas now in Bloomington, Illinois, Democratic caller. Go ahead, Thomas. Uh, good morning, everybody. I would like to say that it's too bad that politics has come to this to where it's all just a big show. Uh, we need to see more meat and more policies discussed, like Bernie Sanders really gets down to the really nitty-gritty that's affecting Americans. Uh, the Republicans, it's all just showmanship, uh, especially with the latest edition of Donald Trump. It's all just showmanship. Let's get back to the real meat and bread of American people's what they need. 
Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Go to Jason now on the line for Republicans. Your thoughts, Jason? Uh, yes, uh, I just wanted to thank C-SPAN. Uh, uh, it seems like uh, I saw Rick Perry um, and uh, on C-SPAN, and he was talking about technology and border security. And Donald Trump has been on television, and basically, you can't. Uh, he doesn't get down to specifics. And it's too bad that, like CNN, it's good that we have C-SPAN to be able to see Rick Perry and uh, uh, candidates like that, which it seems like the regular media is shutting them out. Almost, uh, you know, someone who has given good uh, practical uh, implementations. And uh, it just seems like uh, I just want to thank C-SPAN for giving us that access, uh, people like myself in California and uh, around the country here. Thanks for calling. Lawrence in Bronx, New York, also a Republican caller. Go ahead. You know, good day. Um, I, um, I want to talk about the, the, that first debate. Uh, as a Republican, I am very ashamed that no Republican mention the word poor or the needy or the middle class. All we talk about is, oh, ISIS, a war. We got to kill him there. We got to shoot him there. I want to let the world know that I am very much ashamed to be a Republican because all they think about is war. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Uh, next call, Dave in Brighton, Colorado, line for Independence. Your thoughts, Dave? Yes, hi, good morning. Uh, I just wanted to mention that I thought Debbie uh, Wasserman Schultz uh, did a tremendous job. I thought she spoke well, very uh, bright on the issues, and uh, very energetic for the Democratic Party in terms of all that we've done well the last seven years uh, with President Obama. And with people like her, I think we have a bright future. I just hope that uh, some of our candidates, like uh, Hillary Clinton, can uh, listen to Debbie Wasserman Schultz and uh, have the ability to speak out as well as she did, uh, even with some loud mouths in the back yelling at her. Uh, I think she did a tremendous job. She may be a future president, uh, presidential candidate for the Democratic Party. And I was very proud to hear her speak today, and I thought she made a lot of good sense, and hopefully we'll continue in this progressive, positive movement for the Democratic Party in the future. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, Florida Representative, Democratic National Committee Chair, speaking today at the Iowa State Fair, Des Moines Register Soapbox, and a couple more presidential candidates. This is the last day for the Soapbox, and uh, Chris Christie and Bobby Jindal will be there. We plan to bring those to you live. Tomorrow is the last day for uh, the Iowa State Fair. David, you're up next, uh, Line for Independence from uh, Short Hills, New Jersey. Go ahead. Good afternoon. How are you? Good, thanks. I'm just calling because I've been watching your program, and as an independent, I've voted for President Obama. I also voted for my governor, uh, Christie. But I, right now, I'm just really leaning towards voting for either Trump or Christie because I like their outspokenness. I'm 34 years old, and I'm just tired of the same old politics as usual. They're afraid to commit to an answer. I want someone who's going to stand their ground and say, this is the way it is. We have to fix problems. But we don't get that from, I mean, look at the DNC chairman. She's an embarrassment. I don't know how she's still in the position she's in when since she's been there, all they've done is they've lost everything. They lost the Senate. They lost the Congress. They're most likely, if Hillary stays in, going to lose the White House. And this is a track record she's proud of. You can only beat the women's, the war on women for so long. It's becoming like death to people because that's all we've heard for the last three election cycles out of the Democrats. They don't bring anything new to the table. I mean, we're at a crisis. If you look at our economic standing, we're at $20 trillion in debt. I don't hear the Democrats talking about this. What are they going to do to rectify this problem? Thanks for calling. Victor in New York City, line for Democrats. Go ahead. Hi. 
Yeah, good morning. How are you? Good. Go ahead. Well, definitely, I, I um, want to say that um, the whole Republican um, candidates is a circus. I think they are not talking about what really matters in America, the poor, the poor folks. Now, Donald Trump is targeting immigrants who are who have not, no one advocating for them and are voiceless. Um, the border is not the border is not the problem. Um, the problem is what we're going to do with the 11 million undocumented people here who are the backbone of this economy. And I would I would like to add that Donald Trump, in particular. What does he think he's, he's doing? We're not the only country in this world. We need to negotiate with other countries in a peaceful manner, and that's the, that's the reason why I support the, the Iran nuclear deal. Thank you so much. Thanks for calling. This tweet from uh, Robert, most Iowans want comprehensive immigration reform with a fair pathway, not extreme mass deportations. Time for one more call. This is a go around uh, Nancy, or rather uh, Ginny in Greenbush, Michigan on the line for Republicans. What do you think? Yeah, yeah hi. Um, boy, Debbie Watts, she, she, she likes to really spin everything. She ought to, people ought to look up on the internet about this, uh, uh, abortion clinic. Uh, that lady <laughs> that they, that used to be in charge of it, that started it, boy, she was with the Nazis. <laughs> and people, we ought to stop funding that, period. That. Thanks for calling, Jenny. Uh, we'll uh, take more of your calls uh, later today following a couple of uh, the Republican candidates that are still to come on the Iowa State Fair uh, soapbox. I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.